Welcome to the instructional video for Mice and Mystics by Plat Hat Games. Mice and Mystics is a cooperative adventure game for one to four players, meaning that you'll be working together to achieve a shared victory, or if things don't go so well, a shared defeat. Each of the adventures you play come from one of the 11 chapters in this storybook. And each chapter you play will explain how you can win and what will cause you to lose. In this video, I'm going to get you started on your first adventure from Chapter 1 in the Storybook. The game takes place on these double-sided tiles. The chapter you choose will tell you which tiles to pick and how to arrange them for that game. I've set up the tiles here for the adventure in Chapter 1. Next we have the Story Control Board. You'll place the Hourglass token on the space marked as Page 1 and the end token on the page directed by the storybook, which in this example is page 6. Over the course of the game, the hourglass will advance up the chapter track, and if you have not completed your objective by the time it reaches the end, you will have lost the game. The chapter will also tell you which heroic mice can participate in the adventure. Each mouse has its own hero card. The first adventure tells us we can choose any four mice except for Lily. So I've chosen the hero cards for Colin, Meganos, Nez, and Tilda. If you have fewer players than the number of mice, have some of the players control more than one. Each card lists a hero's starting equipment, which you will find in the search deck shown here. Find the matching equipment and place it near the hero it belongs to. Then shuffle the remainder of the search deck and place it face down on the story control board in the indicated location. You have a chance to customize your mice by using the ability cards shown here. To pick your ability, look at your mouse's hero card. In this location, you will find the mouse's class. As a player, you may choose any one ability card as long as it matches your hero's class. For example, Nez could choose the ability Battle Squeak, as it can be used by Warriors, which is one of his classes. Now we will set up the Encounter deck, which can be seen here. Encounter cards come as either standard or difficult cards, and the first adventure tells us to only use the standard cards, which are then shuffled and placed face down on the indicated location on the story control board. Each hero mouse in your party has a matching miniature to represent it on the gaming board. These four figures are then placed on the starting space shown in the storybook. For chapter one, all four of our mice go on this one space. The storybook will also tell you if there are any enemies that start on the tile with you. Enemies are often known as minions. The first adventure tells us we'll be facing the threat of three rat warriors. Each rat warrior has its own miniature. Each of these figures are placed on their own minion starting spaces, distinguished by rat tracks. Next we have the initiative deck. From this deck, you will need to find the cards matching each model or group of models currently in the game. Each mouse hero has its own initiative card, and the rat warriors have one initiative card that represents all of them. We'll set these aside for now, we'll explain more about them in a moment, but first let's finish setting up by separating the various tokens that come with the game into separate piles easy to reach by all the players and also have the dice handy. And that's the setup. The first time you play an adventure with a group, you'll want someone to read out loud the narrative story text that begins each adventure. This will set the stage for your game. Then you will want to read the chapter's objectives and victory conditions, so that all of the players know how to win and what to avoid. Finally, a chapter may have some special rules for the tile you are currently in. Make sure everyone understands these special conditions. At the beginning of an adventure, and any time an encounter card is revealed, the initiative order must be established in this area here, known as the initiative track. Whenever the first minions, the bad guys, enter a tile, like they are right now at the start of the game, we take the initiative cards for all of our hero mice, as well as those for the enemies on the tile, give it a quick shuffle, and then deal them one at a time face up onto the initiative track, from top to bottom. The order of the cards will dictate the order that the models take their actions. Sometimes a single initiative card will represent several models, 
like our three rat warriors who all share this single card. When their turn comes, all three rat warriors will take their own separate actions before moving on to the next initiative card. If things go poorly and new minions enter the board when we've already established the initiative track, then you'll grab the initiative cards for those new minions, give it a shuffle, and then place those new cards at the bottom of the initiative track. When it is a mouse hero's turn to act, it may move and then take an action, or take an action and then move. So first, let's talk about mouse movement. At the start of a mouse turn, the player controlling that mouse rolls a die. Each side of a die has several symbols, but always a number as well, and you'll add that number to the mouse's movement value, which is located on their hero card. The total is the number of spaces you can move with that mouse on your turn. As you can see, the game tile is broken into spaces. Most of the models, like these mice, are considered to be small figures, and you can fit up to four small figures on any space. Some models, like the spider, have larger bases, filling a space entirely on their own. When a space is full, either from a single large figure or four small figures, other models cannot enter or pass through it. If you enter a space that has an enemy minion on it, you must stop your movement. If you start your turn on a space with an enemy minion, you may leave it during that turn, as long as there are at least as many mice on that space as there are enemy minions. When you take your movement, you must move to adjacent spaces. As long as your mouse's base can bridge the gap between any two spaces, it can use a point of movement to go there. Some areas, like this counter in the kitchen, are not broken up into smaller spaces, and it acts as a single space, and any number of models can be placed there. If you ever enter a space crossing against a yellow arrow, like hopping up on this chair from the floor, it will cost you three movement points instead of the usual one. Red lines indicate spaces that cannot be crossed by mice. Any black areas or section of a tile that represent walls are also areas that cannot be moved onto or through. Any time a mouse moves onto a water space, it must end its movement. When attempting to leave a water space to go to a regular space, this will once again use up your entire movement However, before moving, you must first roll a die for your mouse and every other mouse on the space you are trying to move to, as your fellow mice try to help you out. If at least one star symbol is rolled, you have made it out of the water. If you fail, you must remain on that water space. Sometimes water has current, which is shown by arrows in the water. Any time a mouse ends its turn on a water space affected by current, Move the mouse one space in the direction of the current. If this pushes a mouse off the tile, the mouse is captured, which we'll talk about later. As I said, before or after you take a move, you may then perform one of the following mouse actions. This action allows you to move an additional time by rolling a new die and adding it to your movement value. To search, roll an action die. If a star symbol is rolled, draw a card from the search deck. If the card has the words fortune or treachery on it, then it is an event card and you must resolve the directions on the card right away. Any other card you draw, armor, weapons, scrolls, may be placed face down beside the hero's card. We call this area the mouse's pack. A mouse may only carry three items in its pack. Some search cards, like tricks, have no limit, and a mouse can carry as many as desired. If you don't wish to keep the equipment card, it may be immediately discarded in exchange for a cheese token you will then give to your mouse. Sometimes a hero mouse may become stunned or webbed and have to add one of these tokens to its hero card and suffer the effects. However, you may use the recover action to attempt to remove one of these conditions. When you're stunned, using the recover action immediately ends the stun condition. If you are webbed, you'll first have to roll a die. If you roll a star, you may remove the webbed condition. Otherwise, you remain stuck in the webbing. 
With this action, you can attack enemy minions on the board. There are two kinds of attacks, ranged and melee. Which you can use will depend on which weapon your mouse has equipped. Equipment with a sword symbol is a melee weapon, and those with a bow and arrow are for ranged attacks. To perform a melee attack, choose a target on the same or adjacent space to your own. Then roll a number of dice equal to your mouse's battle value, which is located here on the hero card. And then add any bonuses you might be given by a mouse's weapons or items. This sword adds an additional die to the roll. Now it's up to luck. You roll the dice and check the result. Any swords or swords and shields that you roll count as potential hits against your target. In this case, we have two potential hits. Then the player to your left will roll a number of dice equal to the defense value of the minion you are attacking, which is located here on the initiative card. In this case, the Rat Warrior gets two dice. For every shield rolled, the defender blocks one of the attacker's hits. For each hit that goes unblocked, add a red wound token to that enemy. How many hits an enemy can take is shown by the number of hearts on the initiative card. If a card shows no hearts, like these rat warriors, it means that each minion, represented by the card, can take only one wound. If a mouse is armed with a ranged weapon or a spell, it may target any enemy minion on the same tile as long as that target can be seen. To judge this, we draw an imaginary line from the center of the attacker's space to the center of the target's space. If the line crosses any black areas or walls, then the target is blocked. As with melee attacks, you roll a number of dice equal to the attacker's battle value, adding in any bonuses for ranged weapons or spells. This time, however, only bows and arrows that are rolled count as potential hits. And once again, the player to your left will roll defense dice for the target. In both melee and ranged attacks, any time an attacking mouse rolls a cheese symbol, they add a cheese token to their hero card, which can be used later. Any time a minion rolls a cheese token when attacking or defending, you add a cheese token to the minion wheel on the story control board. We'll talk more about the minion wheel in a moment. However, if a minion ever has as many damage tokens on it as it has hearts on its initiative card, that minion is removed from the board. If that figure was the last minion represented by an initiative card, the initiative card is removed from the initiative track and any cards below it are shifted up to fill in the space. Any time you complete the last hero's turn on the initiative track and there are no enemy minions left on the board, you will have to add a cheese token to the minion cheese wheel. Some minions are bosses and will typically have more than one card on the initiative track. When you wound a boss minion, you decide which initiative cards to place the wound token on. However, to fully defeat the boss, you must remove both initiative cards from the initiative track. The explore action is how you will travel from one tile to the next. In order to explore, you have to be on a tile with no other minions. One place you can take the explore action is when your mouse is adjacent to an exit area. Exit areas look like this, and are on the borders of some room tiles. In order to exit a tile, the tile must be adjacent to another tile with an exit area. In this case, there is no match, so a mouse could not exit a tile from here. In this case, there is a match, so a mouse could exit. All the tiles have two sides, so if you leave one tile to enter another tile with a different colored exit area, flip the tile first so that the colors of the exit areas match. Each tile also has an orientation arrow. Anytime you flip a tile or place a tile on the table, make sure that all the arrows are facing in the same direction. When a mouse successfully explores, all other mice on the same tile, regardless of where they're located, are immediately moved to a space adjacent to the exit area on the new tile. Some tiles will also have a flip space on them, like this. When a mouse performs an explore action on one of these, remove the mice from the room tile and immediately flip the tile over, placing the mice on the flip location located on the new side. Some flip spaces have special requirements. 
This flip location can only be explored if the party has the fish hook and thread token in their party stash. Whereas this flip location will require a mouse with either the Tinkerer or Scamp class to activate it. In addition to taking a single action mentioned previously, a mouse may also take any number of the following free actions as long as it only takes one of each per turn. Also keep in mind, while a mouse is in water, it may not take any of the free actions. When performing share, a mouse may exchange cards or cheese tokens with another mouse on the same or adjacent space. Each weapon or piece of armor you collect has a symbol to see where you equip it. A mouse can only have one item equipped to each body part, except when you see a single paw symbol. You may have two such items equipped, one for each paw. With the equip action, you may switch any cards you are currently using or wearing with any cards in your mouse's pack. This action allows you to trade in six cheese tokens to take any new single ability card that matches your mouse's class. It should also be noted that sometimes an ability card will provide you with a unique action or free action that you can use during your turn. In order to use one of these ability cards, you must first pay from the cheese tokens that you've collected the cheese cost of that ability card. However, keep in mind this simple rule. Even if an ability card provides you with a free action, you may only use one ability card per turn. Some items you collect are classified as party items. These items are not controlled by any one mouse and instead can be freely used by any mouse in the adventuring party. To show this, each party item has a token and that token is placed in the party stash area of the story control board. Then as a free action you may place or pick up a party item from a space where your mice are located. However, if you leave the tile and don't bother to pick up the party item, it is lost to your party, and you'll have to shuffle the party item back into the search deck. Anytime mice explore a tile for the first time, they will have an encounter, which means you draw an encounter card from the encounter deck. Each encounter card lists the pages you might currently be on, as shown by the hourglass token on the story control board. You will then add the minions listed by the matching page number to the tile you have just explored. Then place this card face up on the encounter deck. If there is already a face up card there, discard it to the bottom of the deck. There are a variety of different minions included with the game, and when you are required to place them on a tile, there are some rules you must follow. First of all, minions are always placed on the minion entry spaces, which are marked with little rat feet. You begin by placing any small minions with ranged attacks on any entry space bordered in red. Keeping in mind, you can fit up to four small minions on any one space. If those spaces fill up, look for the next farthest space away from the hero mice. If there are two equally distant locations, the players choose which location to place the enemy minions. Keep in mind you must first fill up a space before moving to a new one. Next, place any large minions on the entry spaces closest to the mice. Again, choosing for yourself if more than one possible option exists. Lastly, place all small melee minions on the closest remaining spaces. But now, instead of filling up just one space, spread them out amongst the entry spaces as much as possible. Whenever the cheese wheel fills up with six or more tokens, a surge is triggered. When this occurs, move the hourglass one step closer to the end token. Then, if the chapter in the storybook that you are playing has a special surge rule, follow the instructions for it. Otherwise, instead follow the surge instructions on the face-up encounter card and then discard that card. If there are no special instructions in the storybook, or no face-up encounter card, then no new minions are placed. Finally, always remove all the cheese tokens from the cheese wheel. 
Minions follow rules similar to hero mice when it comes to movement. First, melee minions roll a die. They will then move that number of spaces in the most direct route towards the closest hero mouse in an attempt to enter that space. If more than one hero mouse is equally far away from that minion, the minion will attempt to move towards the mouse highest on the initiative track. If a minion starts its turn in the same space as a hero mouse, it will not move that turn. Ranged minions will not move unless they cannot see any of the mice on the tile, in which case it will use as much of its rolled movement to move the shortest route towards the closest mouse, stopping as soon as it can see a mouse. Minions follow the same rules for moving from space to space, except they get to ignore the penalties for water, yellow lines, and red lines. After moving, a minion will attack the closest hero mouse. If there is a tie for closest, it will attack the mouse highest on the initiative track. Sometimes things will happen in the game to cause your mouse to suffer various negative conditions. When a mouse is stunned, it can move normally, but may only take the recover action during its turn to remove the stunned condition. A webbed mouse cannot move or take a scurry action until it takes a recover action to roll a die and hope for a star which will then remove the webbed marker. When a charmed mouse takes its turn, treat the mouse as if it were a moving and attacking melee minion. However, only use the information on the mouse's initiative card and ignore bonuses from equipped items and abilities. Once the charmed mouse finishes its turn, remove the charmed marker from it. A knocked down figure is placed on its side. It can attack and defend normally, but it may not move until it spends its entire move to stand back up. Large figures cannot be knocked down. Some wounds a mouse receives are poison wounds and are placed green side up on the mouse. These wounds require special antidotes or cure spells to heal them. Over the course of the game, your mouse is going to suffer wounds these green and red heart-shaped tokens that we already looked at. If at any time the number of wounds on your mouse is greater than or equal to the life value of that mouse, which is shown here on the hero card, that mouse is said to have been captured. Leave its initiative card on the initiative track, but remove its figure from the tile. Discard that model's cheese tokens and any search cards the mouse had equipped. Items in the mouse's pack, trick cards, and its starting equipment are not affected. Then remove all wounds, poison wounds, and negative effect markers from the mouse, and advance the hourglass marker one page closer to the chapter end. When it is a captured mouse's turn on the initiative track, and there are still minions on the board, that mouse must skip its turn. However, when that mouse has a turn, where there are no minions on the board, it may then be rescued which means you can place it on the same space or adjacent to a space with another hero mouse. However, on the turn that it is rescued, it is not allowed to take any actions or do any movement. This video should provide you with enough guidance to get started on your first adventure. If you have any questions, don't forget you can use the rulebook as a reference. But for now, gather some mice, pack some cheese, and have a great first adventure.